Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Doing a, I'm doing some MIG welding today, short circuit MIG, and also called short arc MIG. And I'm, I'm doing a lot of testing, a lot of test joints. So I'm going to weld a good half a dozen joints or more. I'm going to keep the voltage at constant at 19 volts using 030 diameter wire, 7525 gas, keep everything the same, but I'm going to drop the wire feed speed gradually until it just gets ridiculously low. And I'm going to slice and dice and, and cut and etch, and, and we're going to get a result, and we're going to be able to correlate that result to the actual arc. We're bound to learn something doing that. Now, all right, a quick word about cut and etch test, also called macro etch test. Uh, you're only looking at it at low magnification, and I'm talking about carbon steel only today. It's very difficult to etch stainless steels. You've got to have the right solution, but today, strictly carbon steel. You'll see my etches really, really kind of stand out. I'm fortunate enough to have some strong stuff here, but you can use navel jelly, you can use uh, concrete etch solution, it just takes a little bit longer. I think the cut and etch test is very underutilized, especially if you just want to get some information and you're not doing it per a set standard where you have to cut 20 cuts and polish them a certain way and etch them a certain way. You just want some information. You want to know how deep you penetrate or you didn't penetrate. So. Uh, one of these tests is worth a hundred opinions. All right, well, that's a little bit too much talking and not enough welding, so let's get into it. This little power MIG has a sort of a good little interface here. It kind of guides you through the setup where you basically select wire diameter and thickness of metal. And then, it, and then it's got default parameters in there, and so the ones recommended for this thickness are 19 volts, 280 inches a minute using C25 gas. All right, first up, we're going to do that. 19 volts 280 inches a minute. I'm going to try to keep all these joints same as possible. Same technique. Same stick out. Stick out plays a big a big role in the penetration here. But I'm using like a little series of uh, cursive E sort of a technique. That's sort of a, just a favorite technique of mine over the years. And the sound is pretty good. Very little spatter. You can see the amperage readout right there, somewhere around 125 to 130 amps. One down. Now I'm going to drop it down to 250 inches a minute. I'm going to keep doing this. You can see the uh, amperage now is reading a little lower, just a little bit. Sound has changed just a little bit. Overall, though, still doing pretty good. A little bit more spatter here. You can notice it with the camera. I didn't notice it so much while I was welding, but you definitely notice it when I, when I go back and review this footage. Now we're going to drop it down to 220. You notice the 220 turned red just then. That's because the machine is basically telling me that that's a little out of scope for 19 volts using 030 wire. But we're going to do it anyway. Now my amperage dropped down into you know the 115 range or so, 115 to 120. Definite change in the sound. A little more spatter. You'll notice as I, as I drop the wire feed speed down, I'm getting more and more fine spatter. I think what's happening here as I'm welding, I'm dropping the wire feed speed down without even really realizing it, I am slowing my travel speed down. All right, we're going to do 200 inches a minute here. This is where I really noticed that. I think that just that's part of just uh, when you're watching the puddle and you're kind of letting it guide you as far as your travel speed. Because, you know, I'm not mechanized. Notice the amperage really dropped down below 100 there. Travel speed slowed down significantly. But overall appearance of the end result of the puddle, the bead appearance, not tremendously different than the, the previous beads. Definitely a wimpier sound. Definitely more fine spatter, or just as much, a little bit more, I think. But appearance-wise, not like night and day. Now we're going to go down to 170 inches a minute. Now 
and this is going to slow travel speed down quite noticeably. Amperage dropped down in the 80s there. This is this is too low of wire feed speed for almost every application. It's hard to even make myself keep going here, but it's a test. You notice all the spatter too. It's kind of counterintuitive. A lot of people think if you have too much wire feed speed, you'll get too much spatter, but you'll also get it at too too little wire feed speed. Now we're going ridiculously low here, 140 inches a minute. Barely can keep it lit. All that hissing and popping much lower in that that wire would melt all the way back to my contact tip and then I'd be changing out my contact tip but this is super low and this is the reason why short circuit MIG welding is uh, requires a lot of testing to qualify a procedure because the end results hard to tell what went on Also, I decided to do one at 500 inches a minute, just leaving it at 19 volts, but really pumping it up to the max. That's the, that's the maximum wire feed speed for this machine. And that really pushed my travel speed. I couldn't really do a lot of manipulation. It just seemed to want to really push me on pretty fast, but looks kind of like pudding. Looks really cold at the toes. But we'll test it and see what it does. Notice a lot less spatter than I even had at 170 and 140. Interesting. Alright, now it's time to do some tests. You don't need anything fancy to cut cross sections with. I'm just using a uh, angle grinder here, a Metabo, 6 inch Metabo with a slicer plus cutting wheel. And actually one cutting wheel lasted about seven cuts without even any noticeable wear. Pretty dang impressive. Probably took roughly 30 to 45 seconds per cut. A little quick hit with a uh, flap disc here and followed up by two different grits of Scotch-Brite pads, red followed by blue. And that's about all you need to be smooth enough to give a result from an etch. So we got all these different samples here. And it's time to start off with the 280 inches a minute, the very first one we welded. I think Lincoln got it right, recommending 280 inches a minute. That's a pretty good, pretty good little nugget there. Not a whole lot wrong with that. That's the arc, so you can correlate that with the result here side by side. And that's the result. Could be better, but not bad at all. Part of it's probably due to my technique, and that can have a big effect too. 250 inches a minute. Now we notice a little effect of the, the mill scale, I believe anyway. Could be my technique. But I think the mill scale, as I got lower in the wire feed speed settings, had, a, had an effect. That's a straight line there at the toe. Still got good penetration in the root. 220 inches a minute here. See what we got here. Not horrible. Not great. Here's the arc. Out there on the very toe, little area that looks a little cold but overall not too horrible. 200 inches a minute. Another little straight line out on the weld toe. Let's take a look at 170 inches a minute. That did better than I thought. I believe that the really slow travel speed required to keep this thing going kind of helped it, but it's still you see a little evidence of cold lap on the toe. All right, let's go all the way down to 140. Wasn't expecting much out of this and didn't see much either. That laid in there like a bead of caulk on the bottom. Way too low on the wire feed speed. And I decided actually to go ahead and do a brake test on this just to, just to prove to myself it was as bad as it looked. So I clamped it down and clamped my big Ford wrench there to it. And with hardly any pressure at all, it just snapped. Didn't even bend, didn't even bend the, the piece before it snapped. 
Here's a little close-up of how it just hardly even nipped through the hot rolled mill scale of the bottom piece. And I decided also to do the 170 to see if the same thing was true there. But actually, the 170 inches a minute held up much better. Bent the piece over and didn't break. Probably could have broke it if I bent it back and forth. But here's 500 inches a minute. Now, that's spiked down into the root of the joint pretty well, but there's some suspect looking areas, some straight line looking areas near the toe. And you can see the toes of that weld there. It's just like it's just really kind of pudding and just laying up on there and the arc is not playing over the mill scale to bite through it. So that's probably not great. Like I, like I mentioned earlier, you don't have to have any special thing to etch with. Naval jelly just takes a little bit longer, but it does work. And I'll give you a quick example of that here. You, know, you need a, as good a polish as you can get but I, I just use scotch bright pads after the flap disc. And sometimes if you put a little hair dryer, heat things up and speed, speeds the process up, but it gives a pretty good result. Now, before I stop all this etching today, I decided to run one more joint using a slightly different technique. Instead of that little series of cursive E's or loops or whatever you want to call it, I decided to just go straight forward and back, trying to take that arc down ahead into the root of the joint and then pausing briefly. And that looks something like this. It's a pretty common technique, but I wanted to see what it would do. This is 280 inches a minute, like, like the machine recommended for this thickness. And after that cooled off, a little quick, quick etch here. And it got down into the root really well, but a little suspect area out there near the toe of the well, I think due to the hot rolled mill scale coating. All right, well, let's talk about all that for just a minute. What are the takeaways of this video? Wire feed speed affects amperage, but you can only set amperage, you can only set the wire feed speed within a certain range before you need to change the voltage also. So there's a, there's a range of wire feed speed that'll work with, with a voltage. And you, there's also another takeaway is that there's a good bit of leeway there. But as I got down lower, the mill scale seemed to really have an effect. So there's, there's another takeaway. So that's some future videos. I'll do a little cleaning of the mill scale. Maybe we can compare them to this. Always something to learn. You know, if you've got, if you've got some good tips you'd like to leave, uh, please leave them in the comment section below. That's how we all learn. We'll see you next time.